and we should move on to our app date. Final words, anybody? What's app doc? Thank you. That's what I was waiting for. I do appreciate it whenever you make a dreadful app-related pun. I don't know how much longer we will have an app date running because the new and pilot of the NHS COVID-19 app was only due to last two weeks, but we were never really sure. However, this week we will be continuing to look at not just the NHS app pilot, but also at apps in general as part of this, our digital year, we anticipate delivering all of our programme digitally until next spring. So this is not our covered year, this is our digital year. On Friday, we showed you our new film, What's App Auntie? Um, due to some technical problems going live at the beginning, we showed that at the very end. What I'd like to start with now is one of the five short films that we've made from that film as well, because it's a 15 minute film for anybody who hasn't seen it. And it goes through lots and lots of different questions that we know from feedback disabled people and other people already have about how the app will work. And of course, as soon as the pilot finishes, it's going to be released nationally. So what we really mean is some day very, very soon, everybody will have access. So if you could mute your virtual microphone. What's up, Auntie? What are you looking at? The new NHS COVID-19 app, Auntie. What's that? It's a new way to fight coronavirus using our phones. It'll help everyone to protect each other and save lives. I know that our community would want to use the app. We want to do everything we can to help save lives. But I'm worried the government will believe that our community has a very high rate of infection compared to communities where no one bothers to get tested. Then we might get unfairly locked down. Don't worry, Auntie. It doesn't work like that. The NHS tests a national network of thousands of volunteers regularly. They also measure the percentage of people testing positive, not the numbers. That's how they decide about local infection rates. The more people who take the test, the more accurate the figures are. Testing is critical to fighting the coronavirus and saving lives. We need to make sure that everyone with symptoms gets tested so that we can get back to normal as soon as possible. Will you help me to install the app now, please? <laughs> yes, of course, Auntie. Support the app. Support the NHS save lives. And that film starred our very own, the wonderful Sahira Khan. Sahira actually comes from Newham. She lives in a neighbouring borough now. She's an actor and she's also a TV presenter on BSL Zone. So you may already recognise her. Sahira, fortunately for us, also produced his regular videos for us. And when I finally announce very shortly the lineup for our festival, Sahira is going to be appearing at the festival as well. So we were just really, really pleased to have Sahira supporting that. Julie, do you want to kick off with your app talking about the photography app or would you like me to go first? You go first. Well, <laughs> in that case, interesting app fact. I don't know if we can come up with a pun for that, but again, I would appreciate it. Apparently, The Lancet, which is a very high-powered medical journal, did some 
research earlier in the year and they published this i think in july what it shows is how effective the app can be even if very few people use it and it's always going to be more effective than test and tracing systems alone the reasons for that seem quite complicated and quite mathematical but as even one in 20 people start using the app it will make a significant difference if we can get that up to one in four it will make a very significant difference. And I think one of the reasons that's important is, as we know, the media do like to be quite negative. So my guess is that anything other than 100% take up, which would be impossible anyway, because not that many people have got smartphones that are new enough to run it. But actually, a low take up would still be really, in, you know, very, very effective. So everybody who downloads the app, is making a difference and I'm going to try and scroll quickly through and see what that percentage is that makes a critical difference while well, Judy's coming on to hers. So this this app that you're talking about from the Lancet is linked into the app that we've been promoting. Yes well basically what it's saying is any app that does that job would right. have the same effect because all of these apps work in a very very similar way ultimately it's very much about looking at who you've been in contact with for more than 15 minutes who later reports positive for the test your phone will keep that record it will automatically tell you none of that information is kept centrally it all stays on your phone your phone will also tell you if you have visited a venue where there's subsequently been an outbreak and the reason you have that kind of double security is because you could have touched surfaces that were potentially contaminated without spending 15 minutes standing next to somebody who or less than two meters away from somebody who reported symptoms so yes it's any app that works in that way and um, pretty much internationally they all are doing that now partly because it's the only way you can really get it to run on apple and android phones and I think what they've found in countries like Singapore, where they've tried to do things where they collect central data, is they can only do that by effectively tagging people. And I don't think anybody is going to be signing up for a tagging bracelet in the UK. So even though the, the trial itself might well come to an end in a couple of weeks, we'll keep on using it. Absolutely. And we'll be continuing to promote it. We're all wheelchair users. We're all on the shielding list and we'd all like to get back to some kind of post normal. That's an awful lot better than the current normal. And I think very seriously, 3000 people tested positive over on Sunday. That's the highest figure yet since I think April. So although nobody thinks the infection rates are anything like as high as at April yet, we all have to be very, very careful indeed. You know, now is not the time to abandon the precautions you've been taking. Now is time to remind yourself what they were and make sure you're still following it. So I've got a, actually a really important question because I've just had a message through about, well, we now know of three school kids in Birmingham and their classes have all been sent home. Um, to isolate for two weeks are they going to put the track and trace into schools because obviously that would make it um... if there's an age limit for the app um as i understand it schools are currently operating on central government advice and i wouldn't like to kind of hazard a guess but if you're old enough to have a phone i'm pretty sure you're old enough to download the app but my guess is it would be most useful to you outside of school yeah I don't know. I mean, if if kids are now coming into school, COVID positive, then that, you know, and, and I think that we're starting to see that this, you know, the lower bracket of 18, um, you know, is, is kind of a bit false, really. And in fact, one of the children that we've heard about today is only in year four. Mm. So that makes them eight or nine. Mm. Yes, I mean, I think there's a until you're old enough to be able to use a phone properly. Yeah. And I think there's a limit to what you can do with any app. But like I say, I think schools are strange because they're not following the same advice as the rest of the country and the kind of advice that a young person might have to follow 
in a shop or on a bus is not the same advice they're following when they get into school, where it's much more about bubbles and controlling the virus rather than preventing it. So, yeah, I don't want to get too distracted on that. If we move on to the non-NHS app for a moment, I will scroll through these figures and see what the magic numbers are. OK, uh, just picking up then, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Josh's recommendation of the Photoshop camera, which I downloaded and I've been using on the camera. Um, I've used two filters so far uh, and found the results very interesting. What I'm going to do now next is to try and use the filters on some photos from my photo library um, and then play about with that as well. So what I'm hoping to do is to have something back ready for us to look at on this show, because I'd really value Josh's input into this. I think you've, you're much more experienced than me, Josh, on this, and it would be interesting for me to know your, your, um, your reply. But the one, the one that, I, that I was most surprised at is that I always think I've got quite nice complexion. Uh, I'm not, you know, for my age, I'm not that wrinkled. And I took this photograph with the blessed filter and my goodness me, I have wrinkles everywhere. <laughs> so interesting. And I was green. So that was also interesting. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. So I think there's, there's more to there's more to discuss with Josh later in the week, if that's appropriate. I saw some survey over the last few days and the number of people who would consider putting an unfiltered photograph onto social media. You know, this is younger people was just extraordinary. Almost nobody would consider doing anything without a filter. And um, yes, I think at 58 and having always worked professionally kind of including photography in my practice what I think of as a filter is not something to kind of soften your complexion and remove your wrinkles it's you know fulfilling a very different function but the green bit sounds interesting as well <laughs> it is. it's very um oh, very chakrish <laughs> <laughs> I noticed there's a, a message from Renee uh to Josh Have, can you see that Josh uh no, because Robin has the uh, oh, yes. screen, it's live so the chat. chat box is hidden. Let me... Yeah, so Let on me the live chat, Renee Wallen is saying, I'm sure my son would agree with Josh's sentiments. He moved home with me during lockdown too, exclamation oh, yes. mark. <laughs> yes, I think there's, like I say, lots of families out there. And sadly, as furloughs coming to an end, probably a lot more to come. So if one in five people install the app, that would actually be more effective uh, on its own without any other kind of contact tracing system than a contact tracing system would be, which is really quite extraordinary when you think you can install the app for free and how much the contact tracing system works. Of course, in reality, what you have to have is both and have them working together. And that's very much what the NHS COVID-19 Act does. It kind of, it shows you what the symptoms are. It tells you when you need to get tested. It helps you if you need to self-isolate. It gives you the information. It gives you a countdown. You know, it's very much kind of part of the test and trace system. But even if you simply did what it told you, and didn't get in touch with the government at all, and you simply self-isolated, you know, your contacts would still have been warned. And um, and I think that's pretty amazing. Do we have one more app before the end of app date, uh, app chat? Yeah, I was, um, I have Shazam on my, my phone, and um, if you kind of hear music, you can press it and it'll, it'll listen and then kind of tell you what it is. Um, and she's great for the days when we used to go shopping. And then you'd hear a song uh, when we used to be allowed to go out and about. Um, but now I've got it kind of set up so that any songs that I add, if they're available on Apple Music, it then automatically adds it to my music library, um, which is useful most of the time. Part of when you Shazam a random thing to answer a question, then you end up with like One Direction. Um, but... <laughs> What, yeah, what, would, what, what is, would the question be there? <laughs> um, I shazam something a couple of weeks ago on a TV program. Well, that's, that's a good tune. Um, and it kind of came up, oh, sorry, we, we can't find it. And I was like, that's that's a shame. Um, 
And then this was like it was the 22nd of August because it was on the notification. And then I was sitting on the set a couple of days ago um, and my phone dinged and I kind of picked it up and I was like, what's this? And uh, it was from Shazam. He says, um, we're really sorry. We couldn't find the song that you Shazammed on the 22nd of August, but we found it now. So here you go. Um, wow. <laughs> and I was like, I'd completely forgotten about it. I couldn't even remember what the song was. So I kind of opened it up, clicked through to the song and I was like, Oh, that was a really good song. I'm glad it found that. I just thought it was really kind of cool that even in the background, it's remembered that it couldn't find it. And it must, I don't know, kind of periodically go, have we got this yet? Um, and then kind of found it and then sent me a, a, a message to be like, here's your tune. Um, which I just thought it was really cool. I had absolutely no idea you could get an app to do that. And I'm thinking that even when the app pilot's over, on a Monday we should con continue with our app date as part of our digital year. I mean, talking about music, we had our Zoom together, which we have on the first Thursday of each month now. It, it doesn't replace, but it augments our usual live music night, which is on the first Friday of each month and is just suspended for a digital year and I was thinking back and I thought we had Ellen Goody who's an artist with Downs who sang a song from her own album we had Glory Sengo from Act Up Newham sang us a Congolese song and taught us a Congolese song we looked at our own nice cup a nice cup of tea sea shanty we made up signs for it what persisted in my head the entire weekend yellow submarine <laughs> That's unfortunate. And I don't need Shazam to look that one what? up. <laughs> I know, but what's really, really exciting is when you Shazam a tune and it says, that's Angry Fish, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> we'll do it deliberately. <laughs> of course he does. I think it's time to move <laughs> swiftly. Oh, no, no, no. 